Hi everybody, Diana Del Garbino with this week's Principles of Fitness. Thanks for joining us here on Instagram. We have some really good questions today. Uh, the first one is going to be, is soreness normal the day afterwards? I love this question because their answer is maybe, <laughs> it can be. Uh, sometimes it's not normal, sometimes it is normal. But there are some components that we need to look at to make sure that you're getting enough recovery and you're getting the tools that you need to help with recovery. So the first thing is, are you drinking enough water? Our bodies are made up of 75 to 80% water. So if you're not drinking enough water, that can help contribute to soreness. Now the rule of thumb is take your body weight, let's say you weigh 200 pounds, you wanna cut that in half, so that's 100 pounds, and you change that from pounds to ounces, and you need to be drinking 100 ounces per day. And you wanna try and get 25% of them in the morning. You wanna start your day off with water, and that's gonna help hydrate you. Otherwise, if you're trying to load up at the end of the night, we all know how that's gonna end. You're gonna be getting up all night long, and you're not gonna to wanna to drink as much water. And you spent most of the day being active and up uh, so you can get a little more dehydrated and especially on these really hot days hot days you want to increase your water even more so that's the first thing we look at is your water the second thing i want to talk about is your recovery meal your post recovery meal are you getting that in your system within 20 minutes so the research shows that whey protein is the number one type of recovery protein to eat some of us are allergic to whey and can't eat that so um, you have to find some sort of other protein there's pea protein uh, there's I love meat you can eat meat you can eat chicken or fish um, there's plant proteins there's quinoa that has a lot of protein in it but I love that you can get a, a balanced meal of protein carbs and a little bit of fat that's going to help regulate your system feed your muscles, the protein repairs all the little micro tears that we, that we made while the workout's going on, the carbohydrates give you some energy, and the fat helps everything work simultaneously, okay? So make sure that you're eating right away. And then the next thing is sleep. This is where, this is probably the, the most important of all of them, is the sleep. If you're not getting enough sleep, you can't recover. This is how our bodies naturally recover as we go to bed, your body is asleep, it starts doing all those repairs when you're not as active, because you should be just sleeping, and uh, this is when you're gonna recover the most. So, now the four, there's one fourth way, and that's if you've overdone it, maybe just a little too much, but two days of soreness is about normal. Um, I can say right now, today, that I worked out yesterday afternoon, and my glutes are sore today already. Um, it was just a harder workout than I've done, and she, uh, Mary trained me and did a couple of different exercises back to back, which gave me a little bit more muscle fiber activation in my glutes. So I am feeling a little bit sore, but it's, for me it's nothing, I know I didn't overdo it, and I know that I drank water, and I ate, and I slept really well last night, so a little soreness today. I might have just a little bit tomorrow, but definitely by the third day it will be gone. So it is normal. The only time we worry is if you're staying sore three, four, five days after the workout. Then we want to look at, are you active enough? Are you getting up and moving around? Are you drinking enough water? And then all the other things. Okay, so I hope that answered that question. The next one is, why do muscles shake after the during and after the workout? This is another one of my favorites. Uh, is when I'm doing, I've already done legs, and then I'm on a bicep curl, and my legs are shaking so much that it's hard for me to stand up. This is how you know that you have worked those muscles to fatigue. If you guys remember what the goal is, it's not how many we do, it's not how long we go, tension under load, or time under load, it's to get to momentary muscular fatigue or failure. This is when the body sends a message to the brain that there was not enough muscle fiber recruitment, we need more muscles to make sure that we don't fail, that our body can adapt and get stronger. It's called the overload theory. So when your muscles shake, that's just telling you you've expended all the sugars and glucose out of those muscles, you've broken down those muscle fibers, so they're just 
alive and tingling and telling you, yeah, you used us. So this is actually really good. We want to feel that shakiness. If you end your workout as strong and as, as well as you started, then it's probably not, you're not getting to muscle fatigue. You're not even getting close. So we want to try and push you to that muscle fatigue where those legs are shaking. And then we got to get that good recovery, sleep, water, and food. All right, so the next one is when balancing cardio with strength training, do you stack or do you alternate? So this is gonna be another one of those, maybe you do, uh, maybe you don't. So back when I was training for a half marathon, and you can also talk to Patrick, he, he runs marathons, and Corrado is gonna be doing Cycle Oregon here really quick, we're so excited. He's gonna take a whole week to go right around the state. Um, so when I was training, I would do my strength training on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And then I would do my running on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And what I was finding was that I did not have enough time to recover. I was so tired because I'm not a runner. I don't really like it, but I was doing it. And so what would happen is that by the time I would come back to my workout, I could not do as well. My weights were not going up, my times were going less, I, was, I could just feel the fatigue. So what I did was I changed, I did my workouts in the morning on Tuesday, and then in the afternoon, I would go run. And I would do a three to five mile run in the afternoon on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Then I had a full day on Wednesday to rest and a full day on Friday to rest. I took out one of my workouts on Saturday and I would do the full half marathon or 10 mile run on Saturday. That would be my long day. Then I had a full Sunday and Monday to recover and I was no longer as tired and my time started getting better and better on my runs. My weights were still going up. I could still go completely to fatigue and then have enough to go run. So um, I say, Everybody's a little bit different. So talk to your trainer. See if we can help you figure out what's going to work best for you. This is no different uh, with the tennis players that I have and the golfers that I have. I have some golfers who come in before they go play a full 18 or go to a tournament. They'll come in and work out and we can adjust the workout for them. And then they go play because that way their muscles are prepped and ready. And then they'll have another day, a full day of recovery. Um, tennis players, I have some tennis players that go play first thing in the morning and then after that they come and work out and then we kind of play back and forth like let's try it a different way and see which way your body adapts to the best. Uh, so talk to us, let us know, talk to your trainer and we'll help you figure that out because it is very important. You don't want to be overtraining because overtraining causes injuries causes mental fatigue, then you're not as sharp, you can't get that ball, you're not hitting as well, you're not turning your hips if you're golfing or playing tennis. Um, so we wanna make sure that you stay really on top of that so that you can give your best performance. So chat with your trainer, but that's my recommendation is let's try out before and after, let's try a different day. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm more towards the stacking, uh, but you never know, you might be a little bit different. So thanks again for joining us this week. We look forward to uh, seeing you at all our events in September. We have a big month coming up. Uh, you'll get to meet one of our newest trainers, Ryan, in September. Uh, come out to our events and check out our calendar. You can see all this good stuff and fun stuff we have planned. So have a wonderful Labor Day. Everybody get out in that sun and enjoy yourself. And we'll see you at the end of the month next month.